I gotta find a lighter. A soldier and a cigarette. A substitute for sleep and so much more these days. Terrible signal. I cannot send anything. Andriy Palchevsky walks a path he wouldn't have chosen for himself or anyone else. But he's never turned from it, not from the beginning. Hi. It's so nice to see you again. Good to see you. How are well. you doing? Very well. Good. Thanks for seeing us. In the before, Palchevsky was a qualified master mariner at sea when news reached him that Russia's invasion had begun. He hails from Odessa, Ukraine's Russian-speaking port city, and that's where we met him not long after he'd returned to shore to sign up. Because if everybody will run, or if everybody will hide, there will, would, wouldn't be Ukraine maybe a few weeks ago already. But this house we just Nearly 11 months on, we meet in a safe house not far from his front line position. For security reasons, we can't say where, only that he has fought hard battles. His first, he says, was chaos. It was a mess. It's just running, shooting, running, shooting, and thank God everybody survived. And uh, we thought that that was something like a, the greatest battle in the world. We didn't know what expected us later on. Harder battles, ones where he lost men, some dying in his arms. They, they were the best men whom I, <clears throat> whom I ever knew. And uh, I really hope that some of them are alive. Uh, they are just uh, captured by uh, Russians. But several, I know for sure that they will not call me anymore. How much time do you have to process what's going on? There is no much time to grieve, of course. But uh, you don't choose, to be honest. So becoming more like the bulletproof jacket is not only on, on my coat, but is also maybe partly on my heart as well, thinking more, how to say, colder. The temporary quarters are full of ammunition boxes and supplies, but also donations from people and messages from children. And that's what we are fighting for. In November, Palchevsky's unit was amongst the first soldiers to reach towns and villages in Kherson after Russian troops pulled out in November. When people were just coming out of the villages, they were crying, they didn't believe their eyes. Somebody was asking like, guys, are you Ukrainian? The purpose with which he signed up, an understanding that freedom comes with a price, hasn't changed, but he has. I don't feel as much hate as I felt. That's interesting. Yeah, it's really interesting. I thought it would be the other way around, that I would be more angry and like uh, willing to kill and so on, but no. As more you see such terrible things, uh, you understand that really it has to be finished as fast as possible, but of course with our victory. A woman and her bicycle, skimming a vast canvas of destruction. This is the town of Orihiv, hobbled and disfigured by Russian tanks squatting just a few kilometers away. But for Valentina Losh, it remains home. She was riding a bike when we met last spring. A social worker, we were set to follow her as she delivered aid to those in need, despite near daily shelling. It cut our interview short. The damage has multiplied exponentially, but we find Losh still at the center of things, the underground shelter we hid in back then, now a community hub. I remember you, I remember you. Good day, good day. Glad to see you. A year has passed. 
Rehiv has been without water or electricity for months, and people can come here to get warm, charge up their phones. It's also where aid is organized for the 1,900 people still living here. That's out of a pre-war population of nearly 15,000. Losh volunteers her services. After all, even though our city is close to the front, people always remain people. She lives on the city's southern edge, where the rockets fly over her house each night, staying in one room to preserve what warmth there is, and getting a little help from her cats. We have endured a lot. We have experienced a lot. Horror, fear. Her husband had a heart attack during a bout of shelling. He's now in Zaporizhia, an hour's drive away. Her mother's house and her brother's were both destroyed, and yet she stays. A colleague was killed and another was disabled. Then I stayed because I still have people on the street for whom I'm also responsible. And, you know, I couldn't leave my house. I don't know why. This year has taught her much about herself. I have become stronger, more hard-hearted, a little more confident. I can say that all I need to do, I can do. I was always capable of that, but now I can do even more. I have gone through so much that I think I am no longer afraid of anything, nothing. As we get ready to leave, Losh is preparing two big pails of food for the animals now fending for themselves in her neighborhood. Like the German shepherd across the street, left locked in a yard. Good boy, she says, good boy. And then she carries on, her pack trailing behind. Lost or abandoned, no more. But some clearly shell-shocked. Come on, she says, as she heads home. There is nothing weak or hard-hearted about Valentina Losh. Margaret, both uh, Loesch and Paul Chievsky say they've changed, but, but what are the changes that, that you saw in them? Well, with, um, with Andri, uh, the change was more noticeable for me. I mean, A, he's very, very tired. He's a very open person. He's very contemplative, but he was definitely holding a part of himself back, and he spoke about that um, to us, about that sense of trying to protect his heart. But that's what I noticed the most about him. Um, Valentina Loesch was an extraordinarily buoyant people, person, and the thing that surprised me the most about her is that you didn't res- I didn't expect her to be as emotional as she was. She holds a lot in. Um, she seems very, very sure of herself and, and happy, um, but when you get down to talk to her, she's very, very serious, and, and I, I, I don't know if this is a change or not, but it's certainly not something that I expected for her to be quite as emotional as she was, but I guess on another level, it's not that unexpected. It, these are extraordinary times, and these are people being faced with challenges, and they're having to decide how to face up to those challenges. Very extraordinary people. Indeed, Margaret, thanks to you and Jason and JF. Thank you.